Hello and welcome to another week of the AFCB TV preview show. It's been a long two weeks, so Chris Temple and I have plenty to discuss, but here's what's coming up today. Firstly, we'll be looking back at that 4-0 win at Vicarage Road. We'll also be joined by Cherry's captain Simon Francis to discuss life on the pitch. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's game against Southampton here at Vitality Stadium. But there's just one place to start, and that's last time out at Vicarage Road as the Cherries defeated Watford 4-0. Let's take a look at the short highlights. Now Fraser trying to break away down the left-hand side. King busting a gut to get ahead of him. Tries to find him now, it's King in space. We've got Lewis Cook in the middle, Wilson trying to get there too. Well, King open. down the left-hand side, drives it across the goal to Callum Wilson. What a save, the rebound is in, and it's two and two for David Brooks. The counter-attack to absolute perfection. Down the left-hand side, King threaded it right across the box. A world-class save from Foster, but a fine finish from Brooks. And the Cherries on the board, 14 minutes in here at Vicarage Road. It's King. He's already scored two penalties so far this season. He's got an opportunity. He did this last season. We scored a penalty here, and he's done it again. Same corner of the net. Joshua King is born with a 2-0 lead here at Watford, who are going to play the rest of the game with 10 men. And Bournemouth away form suddenly clicking into gear after 33 minutes here. Watford a long way back. So they try and onside. put Wilson away, onside down the left-hand side, he's got Joshua King in the middle here. Wilson left side of the penalty here, Brooks at the top of the box. Wilson teases one in, King's there, across the face of goal, and the Cherries have three! Made by Wilson, finished by King, and it gets better and better here at Hertfordshire for the Cherries. In stoppage time at the end of the half, King on target for the second time in the afternoon. Watford nil, Cherries three. The ball with Lerma over on the left-hand side. Now Adam Smith down the left flank. Terry Spanzo laying as Fraser now heads towards the penalty. Which one in towards Wilson? His first touch is brilliant, and his second's into the net, and it is 4-0. Magnificent individual moment from Wilson, who just stuck out a boot, dinked it over the keeper, who was on the ground, and Wilson just finished it into the net, and it's remarkable. Well, there we go, an excellent 4-0 win on the road. You can watch the full 90 minutes as well as extended highlights on AFCB TV for free. Well, Chris, before the game, we talked about there not being much to separate the two sides, <laughs> but that wasn't the case on the pitch, was it? Yeah, we got that one wrong. I don't think we'd have been the only ones who, uh, who didn't see that coming. Um, it was just a remarkable day, wasn't it? I mean, it was a team like Watford who had been in the form they'd been in um, at the start of the day, as you said. We thought it was going to be tight. Bournemouth's away form had been a bit scratchy. You know, they'd lost a couple. Uh, Chelsea and the Burnley, obviously, result was one they were trying to put out of their minds. But to go there and perform the way they did on the day, I mean, it was a frightening display, really, of, of sort of, I wouldn't say counter-attacking, because Bournemouth were on the front foot for a lot of it um, but just the, the pace and the power that we talk about so often that day the likes I mean Joshua King Callum Wilson um, you know David Brooks on the score sheet again so there were so many fantastic individual performances and at the back as well I mean we talked about players um, the, the attacking players get a lot of the headlines but Nathan Acker and Steve Cook yet again um, you know saw off the, the threat that we we talked about from Deeney and from a couple of other Watford attacking players so all in all and I know the standards are so high that the, the boys and the manager actually weren't wholly happy with the performance um, saying they 
they probably felt like it could have been five, six or seven in the second half. They didn't quite, no, the game as it would do at 4-0, lost a bit of its momentum towards the end when it uh, sort of goes into a bit of cruise mode and Watford have effectively given up and most of their fans have gone home. But um, yeah, all in all, what a great day. And you mentioned Joshua King and Callum Wilson there. It's great to see our two front men on the score sheet. Yeah, the goals are being shared around nicely at the moment. Um, three joint top scorers with the wee man as well. We've all got four goals this season, which is nice. Um, Joshua King, obviously, the latest recipient of uh, another penalty as well. They just keep on coming, the penalties, which the way Bournemouth play and the, the, the skill and trickery and, as, again, pace they've got in the team, they will keep winning penalties. It's a remarkable amount they've won already this season. Um, but, yeah, the King and Wilson partnership is... is is really looking you know, as, as well oiled as, as I've seen it, I think. Um, and I think it's, it's the fact that it's more of a two now as well. It always used to be Callum as the nine and Joshua King playing just slightly withdrawn in the 10 role. But at the minute, it's a two and we're seeing them you know, popping up wide, assisting each other. Callum Wilson has been a bit unlucky in a way because he's got four goals on the sheet, but he's obviously assisted, I think, maybe six or seven this season. He's only behind Eden Hazard in terms of assists this season, uh, in terms of being involved in more goals. So... Uh, I think the King and Wilson partnership is, has been one of the one of the spearheads that they're both contributing because sometimes one can and the other one doesn't. They're both at it at the minute. And a clean sheet as well. That's equally as important from a defensive point of view. Yeah, again, when you look at the defence, you know the defence that started the season with Adam Smith at right back, and obviously um, Diego Rico and Charlie Daniels have shared the the left back spot. But here is Adam Smith now at left back, and Simon Francis back into the team. And looking solid, you know, no mistakes so far this season. I mean, touching wood when I'm saying that, no individual real howlers, um, which have been things that have plagued the team in the past. Um, Asmir Begovic has looked solid, you know, behind. He hasn't actually had a, a whole lot to do, which is, um, you know, a great, again, a great sort of advert for the guys in front of him. Nathan Ako, we've seen this week, linked in the papers to, to big clubs. That's no surprise because the way he started the season, um, I think, you know, if Bournemouth were, had started the season modestly and were 14th or 15th, you probably wouldn't see those headlines. But because Bournemouth are catching eyes, uh, sixth in the table, uh, all of a sudden their players are starting to come into focus a little bit more. So, yeah, the, the defensive side of things really seems to be solid at the moment. And um, let's hope that continues this weekend. And we have to talk about Jefferson Lammer as well. Was that perhaps his best performance in a, in a Bournemouth shirt? I think he keeps stepping up again every time. Uh, I feel like we We've stood here two or three times now and said that was his best game. This was his best game. I think that, again, at Watford, that was his best game. Um, I think he's becoming a bit of a cult figure here already, which is great. Um, for him, he's <laughs> he's he's just uh, he's just he's fearless. Um, he was all over the pitch at Watford. He was absolutely everywhere. Um, and he, him, and Lewis Cook now again just starting to gel in that central midfield partnership as well. Which again, we've spoken about it. We thought it would start the season. It didn't, but now it's bearing a bit of fruit. Um, so both of those players coming to sort of finding their feet, having had a couple of games now to get into Premier League mode, if you like. But Jefferson Lerma, I, I'm really liking the look of him, and I think fans are as well. And of course, we've talked before about home form being so good, but it's good to back it up with an away win as well. Yeah, and after the, particularly after the Burnley thumping, um, which, which I guess no one really saw that coming as, as much as they didn't see the Watford win coming. So I guess those two have balanced each other out, really. But the home form here has been magnificent with goals coming left, right and centre. So to be contributing away from home as well. And I'll go back to the fact that the fixtures have been quite favourable. The first 10 games, only one of the big six. Um, uh, people might say that's a bit negative to say Bournemouth have only got points because they've not played any of the big teams. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is they've taken advantage while they've had slight, a, bit, a slight bit of slack in that fixture list. Um, when you look at November and December, you know you, these these wins away at Watford. That, I think that's when they're going to come in beneficial for sure. So yeah, and it was it was brilliant. You know, as you said earlier, to to go into the international break with that as well. So everyone's had a great two weeks and a great two weeks of anticipation now ahead of this game this weekend. Well, one man who has been informed is Cherry's captain, Simon Francis. He'll be joining us next, but firstly, let's take a look at what happened when the AFC BTV cameras went out and about with the Cherry's captain. Personally, yeah, I, I certainly have regrets that I didn't work harder when I was younger. Um, and that's why now, as, funnily enough, as captain, I, I try and get that into a lot of the younger players now to work harder, do the right things on and off the pitch, um, to give themselves the best chance of playing at the highest level as early as they can. Because I made some mistakes, had regrets when I was a lot younger, and it took me longer than it should have really to play at the highest level. And that's not backing myself saying, you know, I should be playing in the Premier League at 21. It's not, not like that, but I know I could have played a lot higher before having come to Bournemouth um, and getting promoted with the guys. Again, having said that, I don't think I could have chose a better way to do it with this football club, um, getting two promotions, playing with a bunch of lads week in, week out, who I love playing with, get on really well with. 
and then ended up being captain. So there's, there's certainly a, a way to do it and I've enjoyed every minute of it. But yeah, I, I do have regrets and I would have loved to have played Premier League football a lot earlier. Well, that was what happened when the AFCB TV cameras went out and about with Simon Francis. You can watch the full thing on AFCB TV this week or pick up a copy of tomorrow's matchday programme to watch the interview in full. Now then, as you can see, we're delighted to be joined by Simon Francis here today. Simon, thank you for joining us. You must be delighted to be back in action tomorrow after a two-week break. Yeah, certainly. I know, I know the players are, are really up for it. Obviously, the home form we've had this season has been excellent. So. Players chomping at the bit um, to get another home result, that would be fantastic for us and um, been working hard over the two week break. Obviously a couple of lads have been away on international duty but good to get them back now and raring to go tomorrow. It's funny when we talk about the 4-0 win at Watford for because here we are, four goals away from home against a team who've been playing well, a clean sheet and actually people weren't happy necessarily with it, you, you, you wanted more. Yeah, I mean I guess that's a sign of how well we've done this season, how far we've come as well because we felt it could have been more, even in the changing room after the atmosphere was slightly subdued, which is strange for a 4-0 win away from home, um, something I've never experienced before. But I think it's because we're, you know, we set our standards very high and we know we could have won the game 5-6-7 and goal difference might be important a lot further down the line. And I say 5-6-7, that's no disrespect to Watford, but we could have completely killed the game off second half. Um, but you know, you have to take a 4-0 win away from home in the Premier League with a lot of pleasure. Um, that gives us a lot of confidence going into tomorrow. And this time last year, you could almost say that the team were struggling for goals. That's certainly not the case this year, is it? Four against Leicester and four against Watford. No, it's been pretty much polar opposite to the start of last season. That's always been at the back of our minds coming back at this pre-season that we wanted to get off to a good start, put the demons to bed from, from last pre-season and last season as well. The, the start we had wasn't great. And um, yeah, I just don't know why the, why the goals weren't going in um, the start of last season because we, we're always creating chances. We always do look like we can score on the attack. Um, but this season, it's like I said, it's been the complete opposite. We're counter-attacking really well. We're creating chances. Um, we're getting into the penalty area a lot more, um, even drawing penalties, which is which is good for us. So, yeah, the chances are going in for us and it's looking good. And at the other end, of course, the goals seem to not be going in quite as easily against you. The mistakes seem to have been cut out. You seem to be solidified a little bit more defensively as well. Do you think that's been key? Yeah, well, again, I think it's something we've been working on a lot, especially pre-season. Um, we tend to split up a lot in training. The defenders work together as a unit and it's just getting that that back four working, um, really building confidence, team spirit within the back four. Don't get me wrong, it's a team game and everyone has to defend at times, but you know that last line of defence is, is so important. Um, and I think the lads have been really pleased this season. We probably should have kept a couple more clean sheets than we have done. Um, but 4-0 away from home against Watford was a, was a great result for the defenders as well. We didn't want to concede at all. Um, and again, it, it gives us more confidence going into the next couple of games. And how pleasing was it? You talked about the clean sheet there, going into the international break with that clean sheet as well as, as three points. It's massive. I mean, we've been on the end of, of a defeat and, and gone into the international break and it really does kill the mood for, for a few days, especially when there's players away and it's a little bit bitty. Training can be um, not to its usual high standards, but the manager's been great um, as well at keeping the team, uh, team spirit and the character within the, in the squad. And luckily for us, the re results have gone our way and we've had good international breaks this season. Um, you know, long may it continue. Obviously, the next one will be after Newcastle, so hopefully we can get a result there. But it does certainly lift the mood within the couple of weeks. You know, training is going to be good. and um, Not that we'd let our foot, foot off the gas, if anything, we've stepped it up again because um, we don't want to make the same mistake that we did going to Burnley. Um, certainly not against two teams that are lower than us in the division. but have real threats and, and can be a danger to us. So we've got to be aware of that tomorrow and it's going to be a, a crucial game. As we stand here now, it's nice and calm in the stadium. It's beautiful weather for a South Coast clash tomorrow as well. The atmosphere will be anything like this, anything but uh, like this tomorrow. Um, it's a game that fans obviously have circled in their, their calendars. It's a fixture that traditionally you haven't actually done brilliantly in. One win in the six that you've played so far in the Premier League against Saints. Um, what are your thoughts going into it? Because at the minute, there's a long gap between yourselves in the table. You've got 16 points, they've got five. You finished above them last season for the first time as well. And some of your teammates have been suggesting that you are now the top team on the South Coast. Um, well, I don't want them to get too far ahead of themselves just yet, so I, w I won't say the same as that. But I, I would agree that we're probably favourites going into this game, of course, because of form and, and our league tables. Um, the league position doesn't lie, of course, but you know, being a derby game, any anything can happen. Um, and I think it has become a real derby game for us over the last few years, especially since the Premier League. It's something for the, the fans to get excited about, something else for the fans to get excited about. Um, and I'm sure the atmosphere will be great. I think we've performed better at home against Southampton over the years than we have done away. Um, obviously, we've got the win here, which is important that we can um, reference to. So it's going to be a big game tomorrow. I think if, we, if we're on it and we have the right mindset that we have done over the last couple of games, um, 
and I think we'll be all right. We can't go into the game thinking they're below us. We're doing all right. We've got a big gap because um, as soon as you you fall short of that, then I think you'd be in trouble against any team in the Premier League. We saw that against Burnley. Um, yeah, so we have to have the right mentality going into tomorrow, but hopefully we'll be okay. Well, Simon, thank you very much for joining us. We better let you get back off to training ahead of the game tomorrow. Okay. In the meantime, we'll have a look at that one win in the Premier League against Southampton. Here are the highlights. Six waving in the central position. And it goes from Richie with real pace. Also got in the way. Can't do anything about the follow up. It's Steve Cook who gives Bournemouth the lead in the local derby. Well, it's a brilliant ball initially from Richie. Forster only saw it late. He reacted. But all he could do was palm it into the path of Cook. Into a great area, and a brilliantly taken goal by Benny Kafobi. Doubles Bournemouth's lead, and their first victory in a league game against Southampton since 1958 is all but assured. Well, let's hope it's another exciting game here at Vitality Stadium. Chris Frano says that we're going into the game as favourites, but how do you see it playing out? I think it's, I mean, if anyone likes a bet, I think it's a good price on Bournemouth tomorrow. They're at least even money. Some places they're odds against tomorrow to win here, which uh, on the form book, that looks too big a price for sure. Um, you, you have to have Bournemouth as favourites. They've won five and drawn one of the home games here this season. The, the goals, as we said earlier, have been coming thick and fast. Southampton have been you know, well below par. I don't want to say hopeless, that would be a bit uh, a bit strong, but um, it's worth pointing out their only, win this season ha uh, their only wins this season have been away. Um, they won at Brighton and at uh, Everton in the League Cup, albeit on penalties. Uh, they won at Palace in the League. So, <clears throat> that, excuse me, their home form has been the problem. Away from home, you know, again, without the pressure of playing in front of your own fans. And it's something we've seen with Bournemouth before, where the away form has actually been a bit better because you're away from the limelight when things aren't going well. So, yeah, um, I would say Southampton coming here, Bournemouth definitely the favourites and rightfully the favourites. Um, I think it's a good bet if you're going to have a bet that Bournemouth uh, would win this game in terms of the value you'll get for it. Um, and to be honest, it's it's the biggest expectation probably has been on Bournemouth in this fixture um, because in the past, you know, while Southampton may have been lower in the table or whatever, they've always been perceived as the bigger club. They've always been perceived as having the the stronger resources. Um, you know, there's been talk. I know Steve Cook's name has gone up in the press to saying that uh, uh, the quotes attributed to him saying that uh, Bournemouth are now the top club on the south coast and they've gone past Southampton. Uh, it's possibly a bit early to be to be saying things like that, but um, I know what he means in that. Bournemouth finished above Saints last season and are well above them in the table this time round. So as we stand here now going into this game, I think, you know, that Bournemouth absolutely are the favourites, yeah. And how much does this game mean to fans? Because there's a lot of talk about whether it is a derby, whether it isn't a derby. How much does it, does it mean to those that are going to be here tomorrow? It comes up every time, doesn't it? And uh, I think it, it gathers pace every time as well. And every time that Bournemouth are above Southampton in the table and every time if Bournemouth can get a result, then that will continue to, to sort of build, if you like. Um, I don't know. I think if the people that tweet me are split. Some of them are like, we're quite like not having rivals. Bournemouth fans are quite enjoy not having uh, anybody to worry about down the road. Um, whereas Southampton fans, you know, they'll always say that Portsmouth are their big rivals. I think it's a it's a nice to have game if you ask me. It's sort of somewhere in the middle. It's a um, it's a game that you know geographically 25, 30 miles separates the two places. Uh, there's always been a bit of a mutual crossover of interest between the two clubs, and fans have probably always looked out for results. Obviously, a few players have, have gone between the two as well. Um, you know, Danny Ings, for example, will be coming back here this weekend, and I hope he'll get a good reception because obviously here this was the place he, he sort of made his name, if you like. So yeah, um, as far as I always say, it's not the derby, but it is a derby. That's my my phrase, if you like. 
And you mentioned Danny Ings there, he's been getting on the score sheet quite a lot for Southampton this season. Who else are their danger men this weekend? Well, of course, another man that has scored here last season that Eddie Howe knows very well is Charlie Austin, of course, who hasn't been starting that regularly for Saints, but I'm sure he'll be very keen with his Pool Town links, of course, as well. Uh, so Ings and Austin, of course, have followed the same path in playing for Eddie Howe at Burnley and now ending up at, uh, at Southampton. Um, so apart from that, I mean, Saints, they've been out of form, Saints, but they have got players. You think of Nathan Redmond, who can very quickly make things happen as well. Um, defensively, I, I always like Ryan Bertrand. I think he's a real danger. He, again, he scored here in this fixture before down the left-hand side. Um, I've always thought if he was ever wanted to uh, to move on with no disrespect to the, the left backs they've got here he would be a, a great kind of player for the way that Bournemouth play uh, an attacking left back uh, he's got a great left foot uh, strong player as well so he always seems to have a decent game against Bournemouth and obviously a former Cherries Loney as well so uh, Ryan Birch and I I'll be keeping a, a firm eye on the one place I think Bournemouth can get at Saints is defensively they just they just don't seem to have gelled as a unit they don't seem to be able to work out what their best formation is they played three at the back in the last game uh, with Yoshida and Hoot and Bednarek they've got Vestergaard the, the Danish signing who they brought in over the summer as well who's been in and out he's out the last game so again trying to work out the best way to play Mark Hughes' side, uh, they haven't really gelled at the back. So their defensive marking at set pieces can be a little bit all over the place. They mark zonally, which has come back to haunt them on a couple of occasions as well. So I think I, if I was a Saints defender, I would be pretty worried to come in here the way Bournemouth have been playing and the way that they've been defending. And ahead of the game, Eddie Howe does have a couple of injury concerns. He mentioned Ryan Fraser and Joshua King as well. Yeah, uh, again with Eddie, it's never never quite know uh, how sort of uh, how much to read into those. But Ryan Fraser, we obviously know we can read something into because he didn't go on international duty with Scotland, so that would be a bit little bit of a worry for him. Hamstrings obviously uh, uh, are a bit of a worry when they start to, to flare up. The one thing I will say about that is that Junior Stanislas is, is obviously back in the fray now and would be a perfectly able deputy. Um, Ryan Fraser, it was good to see him contribute uh, at Watford. He had a, maybe a quieter game or two since his flying start to the season, so he was involved in um, in the one of the. Goals. I can't remember which one now, uh, Watford starting the counter-attack. So he's one doubt. Um, and Joshua King, Eddie mentioned with a, an ankle injury, um, he played a, a big part for Norway, who've had a couple of good results. And actually, Joshua King could be up against his Norway teammate, uh, Mohamed El Yunusi, who scored the winner for Norway in the international break. So those two will know each other well. Um, so, yeah, King and Fraser both sort of have a slight question marks over them. But I would say if one of those two was out, I would say it'd be a bigger blow to lose King, the way he's been playing. And you said we've just come back off the, the international break. How important is it to get off to a good start for this next run of fixtures? Yeah, so Fulham away next week, of course, and then the fixtures just start to get that little bit trickier, don't they? So um, I would say to keep the momentum going, to rediscover the momentum after the international break uh, is very important. Some of the key players, Joshua King has had a good international break. David Brooks had a good one for Wales. Nathan Ake had a good game for Holland. Uh, even Asmir Begovic has been away with Bosnia and played uh, the second half of the game as well. So quite a few of the lads have been away who... Um, possibly sat on the bench last time and didn't see a lot of football. So they've got some good minutes. Their momentum will have been kept going. The team here have been doing, uh, they've been out in the forest and doing stuff again. We know Eddie Howe likes to keep them busy. They've been out paintballing and stuff to, to keep the team spirit up. And the one thing I will say is the team spirit gets mentioned quite a bit. Um, we've heard Simon Francis mention it, talking to a couple of the other players this week. They're always talking about the team spirit at the moment, which in games like this, I think, does count for quite a bit. So, um, yeah, picking up exactly where they left off after the break a fortnight ago would be the, the perfect way, I think, to kick off this next batch. Well, it certainly does have all the ingredients for an exciting game. That is all we've got time for here today. We'll see you tomorrow at Vitality Stadium for AFC Bournemouth against Southampton. We'll also be back next week to preview the game at Craven Cottage. Thanks for joining us.